Where a better place to start looking at functions than by looking at polynomial functions? Today we're going to talk about linear functions, quadratic functions, and cubic functions. And we're going to just take some examples that are fairly common in mathematical biology and biocalculus. A linear function has an intercept, we'll call this C0, and it has a slope. And for example, a linear function could be used to describe the level of carbon dioxide versus time from about 1980 to about 2020. And it turns out that a linear function does a very good job of uh, doing this. Quadratic functions can either be uh, happy faces or sad faces. I'm going to draw a sad face quadratic function. It goes up and comes down like this. And this model has been used for uh, population growth. And so the horizontal axis shows the population size. The vertical axis shows the population growth rate. And uh, so the population declines when it's above the carrying capacity here. And it grows when it's uh, below the carrying capacity. And this is also referred to as the logistic growth function. You notice that uh, the domain for a quadratic function would be the whole real line. But often when we talk about biological problems, we only draw the part of the function that we're interested in. And in this case, because the population size is going to be a non-negative quantity, we just consider n greater than or equal to 0. Population growth rate has also been modeled with a cubic function. Here the shape is a little different. And the cubic function that we're interested in looks like this here. And so this has been referred to as Ali dynamics in honor of the scientist called Ali who discovered that populations sometimes uh, have negative growth rates when the population sizes are small. And so this is what's shown here in this region here we have a negative growth rate. As before, k is the carrying capacity, and now the quantity c is a threshold. So if the population size lies between c and k, it'll grow. If it lies below c, it'll decline. And so we can get a variety of different qualitative features simply with polynomial functions, and these are often seen in biocalculus.